Good evening to all of you. Thank you for being here with us. Now, uh, today we will speak uh, about uh, the book, the biography, and above all, what is, uh, could be the meaning of uh, this biography uh, for the, cons the consequences for European history until now and maybe not only European history. So uh, uh, we prepared some questions. And first of all, an introduction. A question is an introduction. It's the first question for uh, Professor Schilling. May I just add one? Yeah. First of all, um, I would say hello to you all. And mm -hmm. I think it was a good choice to come here because that is the only place which is uh, really cool, and I <laughs> and I will I will stay here. If everybody is leaving the room, I will stay here. It's uh, really, really good. The second point I just want to to add because the editor is in this room um, a, a fortnight or f f five weeks ago. A Russian uh, translation was edited and. Uh, who want us to buy a Russian uh, a copy, he, ca he or she can do it by the um, uh, uh, editor who is uh, the, the publisher who is uh, in this room. And there is a Slovakian one uh, uh, and a Polish one. And uh, especially the Polish one, I think, is really important because there is a certain kind of, it's not a question of the religious interpretation, but as you will know, Poland was uh, really uh, in uh, problems with regard, uh, or the, the Prussian uh, put pressure on Poland, and uh, Luther was always a kind of the German hero against the, the, the Catholic uh, um, Polish uh, tradition. So I think it's really, um, for me, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a great thing that it was translated especially uh, into Polish. Sorry for not being updated. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know it. Uh, so, the first question is an introduction. Who was Martin Luther before the uh, 31 October uh, of uh, 1517? I mean, which kind of Catholic? Uh, a brand new book written by the distinguished Italian historian Adriano Prosperi is just concerned with the Lutero Catolico. Uh, gli anni della fede e della libertà. The title is Lutero, gli anni della fede e della libertà, translated as uh, the year of faith and uh, liberty. And uh, until when could we say that Luther was Catholic? And after then, no more Catholic. What did the lead Luther want to reform in comparison with our previous projects of reforming the church? Yes, uh, you see here uh, one, as I th suppose on all points, uh, 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 working on Luther and with Luther, one should be very keen with regard to expressions. I just want to formulate a provocative, in my eyes not at all provocative, but could be provocative uh, for in this uh, country. Luther was Catholic all his life long. In his own feeling, of course, he was Catholic. Uh, who was not Catholic uh, was a pope. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the church, which afterwards was called the Catholic Church, the uh, notions and the expressions uh, came uh, up only during the first half of the 16th uh, century. In the uh, second uh, part, they were already uh, well known, uh, the Catholic side and the Protestant side. Or sometimes uh, the, the uh, Protestants uh, were called Lutherans, and Luther himself never accepted this uh, expression. He wanted to, uh, he did not want to, uh, to build up a Lutheran church. So, 
in his feeling, he was Catholic because he wanted to go back to the evangelical, the evangelical uh, basis uh, of, uh, of uh, Christendom. And here you, as, as you, you became aware at the, in the moment that Luther is not a hero alone or not uh, being, uh, coming uh, from, from heaven to, to bring a new, uh, uh, new ideas to the world. If I am informed correctly, there is a movement Evangelismo uh, in uh, Italy and that is exactly the same um, intention uh, of Luther going back to the evangelical roots of the uh, Christendom. And if he attacked the church, he never attacked Catholicism. He it, uh, attacked the Pope, the papal church, the papal church who is the, which is the wrong church in his, uh, in his uh, feeling. And in uh, looking not only on Luther, you see in, during the last uh, 500 years there was a um, research on the history on Protestant side and on Catholic side uh, and especially uh, in Germany during uh, the uh, uh, last centennials it was always focusing on Luther but never and this was my intention with the biography putting Luther in his world not only with regard to politics, to, uh, uh, to, um, to economy, and so on and so forth, but putting him into the discussions within uh, 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 Christendom. And then you became uh, aware that he, in my eyes at least, he is part of a broader uh, ref reform movement. He, start, he didn't start to become a reformator. Reformator, in, in, in the German language, there is a distinction between reformator and reformer. He became a reformator only later on. He started as a reformer, as there were a lot of reformers within the church at that time. The problem in my eyes was that the pope could always... Um, yes, suppress uh, uh, this um, uh, movement, whereas the movement was already on, uh, on the way. But nevertheless, he uh, was uh, able to suppress it. Uh, even 1517, the Lateran Concil was closed by Pope Leo X, I suppose in March or April, um, whereas uh, the, uh, the Council Fathers some of them were eager to, to discuss on reforms. And their ideas were not so far away from Luther's ideas, which were developed only in the next years. He wasn't a refor reformator uh, in October 1517. He developed only his uh, ideas into the direction of reformation uh, during the years 1570 uh, 17 uh, to uh, 1520. Um, so, in my uh, opinion, we have to deal with Luther and the Reformation as part of a general movement to reforms uh, in the uh, uh, church. And only after Luther, not only Luther fa failed, in my eyes, Luther failed. Uh, the uh, uh, Lutheran church um, officials who are so happy to, to have this brilliant 500 years um, anniversary, they are not so happy if I tell them he failed. But actually he failed because he didn't succeed to reform the church as a whole. He started to reform the church as a whole and he failed in that. But the church, the hierarchy, failed too because uh, it was not able, it wasn't even, they were not even able to understand Luther. Uh, they were not able to react in an appropriate way. 
And after that, then there came the clash or the, the, the reform movement uh, spread into two branches, the reformation branch and the reform branch within the church. And I think 500 years after that situation, it is most important, not as is a little bit the tendency among German Lutherans, especially not Lutherans, but the official church, EKD, and they have a vice president who is organizing everything. And here I have the feeling he wants to make an economic um, um, uh, um, feast uh, at the uh, 31st of, of October in telling people the theological differences are not so important. I think that's the wrong way. The right way is to become aware that, for, uh, that it was a common interest at the beginning of the 16th century to reform the church and that Luther was part of this movement and that only 1520, 1521, uh, there was a separation uh, and so uh, the anniversary uh, should be an opportunity to go back to the original uh, meaning of reform within uh, the church. Not the churches, but within the church. And now, was there another question in yeah. your question? Uh, what did Luther want to reform in comparison with other previous projects or reform in the church? First of all, he wanted to <laughs> reform in the same way. I don't think we can, it gives a sense to argue, um, Luther started with an idea uh, as a blueprint uh, of a new church and uh, telling or, or, or having the idea all the reform movement up to me were wrong. I am the hero who starts with a new and the real idea. No, he didn't have a blueprint. He started uh, at a very concrete point with regard to, to the indulgent uh, problem. Um, and even at that point, he wasn't aware and he didn't want to become a, a, a reformator. He wanted, to, even at that point, he wasn't so strongly interested to reform the church in general. He just wanted to tell the hierarchy that this kind of, um, of indulgent with regard to eternal salvation is wrong not so much with the theory of the church, but with regard to the praxis, how it was preached uh, in, uh, uh, in his surrounding, in, 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 in the center of uh, Germany, Saxony, southern Brandenburg, and so on. And he realized, and before this experience, before he heard um, about the preaching of Tetzel, Tetzel, uh, no, Tetzel. Um, he himself worked on his theological, spiritual problems without wanting to become a reform reformer, let alone reformator. He had a problem, a very individual problem. His, I, I, wouldn't, like, I would, wouldn't like to call it a subjective uh, 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 problem, an uh, individual problem, his own personal, or best would be the personal problem his personal problem, how can I get a, 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 a merciful God? How can I um, have uh, the eternal salvation? And this was already 10 years ago that he started with these problems. And then we have to become aware that he was, he, he went into the, uh, into the convent uh, he became a monk and he thought, now I can find the right way. But his experience was that he didn't find it. But nevertheless, he 
um, he was not the lonely monk uh, in a cloister. He was a, a, a leading, he became a leading figure in his, uh, in his uh, order. And he became a, a, a teacher, uh, as I like to call it, a Bible professor. He was a general professor, but he was, was concentrated on the Bible work. And here uh, became the breakthrough in his personal problems. He still had the personal problems, will I have the eternal salvation? And he became aware the life in the monastery itself doesn't help me. And so happily enough, and the convent wasn't that bad, uh, the convent allowed him or made him uh, the reformer. When especially his uh, Staupitz, uh, he was a, a very good leader for this young, it's not, he was not that young, but this young monk. And they allowed him or they told him, go and study the Bible and teach uh, uh, the Bible. And he did it. And then by studying and teaching the Bible, he found the solution for his personal problem. And then there came the indulgence uh, um, uh, problem and affair with Tetzel. And he realized, I found my way, but the way how the church preaches the indulgence is the totally wrong way, because they will send everybody into hell, because they, they, they don't give the right way how to find a merciful uh, God. You cannot find a merciful God. You cannot find uh, salvation by paying uh, things, but you have to take booze and you have to work uh, uh, to read the, uh, not so much to, mer to work your, your, by yourself to be, uh, to be, uh, to find the salvation, but to find a merciful uh, 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 God, and that you will find by studying the Bible. And this was the situation of Luther when uh, he, uh, he published the, um, uh, the 95 Theses, and most of you will know, or everybody will know, there is a big discussion whether they were hammered uh, on the uh, church door. This is one of the myths in my eyes of German Lutheran interpretation. And even today, as all scholars know, this was not the way how it started. They have the hammer as a symbol of Luther. Luther hammering the, the 95 Theses to the door. This is 19th century interpretation, but not Luther's, you see, with Luther started uh, the modern times. This was not his idea. We don't actually, we have to say, we don't know exactly how it happened. They could be hammered to the, to the door. A new idea is that they were put on with glue, might be, but uh, that is not important. Important is, and the only thing we can trace by sources exactly that he sent two copies uh, to his um, uh, to the hierarchy, that is to his uh, local bishop uh, Schulz uh, in the bishopric of Brandenburg, uh, and to uh, Albrecht uh, of Brandenburg, the uh, archbishop at, and uh, primas uh, in Germany. Uh, at uh, uh, Mainz, and he wanted. It was this. In the, actually, the Reformation start. It started in the case of uh, of uh, putting the first domino stone uh, in move, but not uh, with respect uh, that there was already the Reformation uh, of uh, Luther, and the only the of faults on the side uh, of uh, Luther and on the side of the hierarchy. Uh, only then Luther became a rebel and he became aware that he cannot 
um, have a reformation or reform, a general reform of the church because the hierarchy didn't react uh, adequately. Thank you. And then we go on to the uh, second question or the first question. You gave uh, to your biography the title Martin Luther, Rebel in an Age of Upheaval. Which kind of rebel was Luther and which upheaval characterized that age? Yes, uh, first of all, we have here a disputation. That is very important. <laughs> Luther wanted to have a disputation, but he never got it. So we have one, but if, couldn't we have a possibility to, uh, that there is a re reaction in the audience on, uh, on maybe, our statements? Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe at the end? If, if, but, or, uh, I, if I anybody don't... wants to uh, have an opposition uh, uh, statement against my statements, please tell me and say so, <laughs> so we could have a, a, a disputation and so we can do it immediately if there is a reaction. Okay? Okay, now, <laughs> yeah. now a time yeah. of um, uh, upheaval and yeah. uh, uh, the question of rebel. Okay, you see, writing books, it's the same with, uh, with uh, Prosperi, the title mm -hmm. of his books, The Catholic Luther, um, you have to find a, a, a good title. And mine is, of course, um, found in the German context. As you will know that uh, uh, 1983, when we had already two German uh, 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 countries, uh, uh, German states, there was a big competition between the Bundesrepublik and the DDR, and curious enough, the communists found Luther as one of their founding fathers in a certain respect. And there was a big discussion and there were two um, anniversaries in, in, in the East, mainly I think in Erfurt and in the West in Nuremberg and the uh, uh, Luther of course could only become one of the founding fathers of the DDR if he was a revolutionary. And so he was interpreted in a way of part of the Frühbürgerliche Revolution early bourgeois revolution. So um, today, uh, and especially the center of the Luther, uh, of the Luther memory today, uh, uh, in this year, are former DDR uh, um, uh, country. And you have to, re uh, I realize that they have of course still in mind how Luther uh, was uh, commemorated in 1983 Thou, this idea of an early modern uh, revolution, very curiously, uh, didn't, uh, isn't uh, followed any longer within uh, scientific or scholarly discussions. But nevertheless, in, 90, in the 1980s, 70s and 80s, this, uh, on the, not on the political level, but on the scholarly level, this competition bes between the interpretation Luther as a revolutioner and the interpretation in the West Luther as a reformer uh, or reformator uh, was uh, very stimulating for Reformation history. And I myself, uh, as I am now unfortunately a pretty old man, at that time I was in the center uh, of the uh, discussions and I myself was uh, shaped by this uh, uh, discussion. So I had to, I had the feeling with regard to many people in the center uh, countries, lender uh, of Lutheran territories, Sachsen-Anhalt, Sachsen, Thüringen and so on, they have still in mind he is a uh, revolutionary. Now in the end he was a so-called uh, Fürstenknecht uh, knife, uh, 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 slave of the, uh, of the uh, uh, princess, which of course is in the same way wrong as this interpretation as a 
uh, as a revolution. So I found the impression, uh, expression of rebel because he didn't, in my eyes, he did, as I just uh, tried to explain, he didn't try to find a brand new progressive uh, ideology, idea, by which he wants to turn everything uh, upside down. Now he started as part of the late medieval reforms uh, uh, movement and then had to oppose the church which didn't react in a proper way, which didn't, and not only the church, all, also the emperor, the both most important uh, institutions uh, uh, of the time, they didn't give him the opportunity to explain his ideas, to bring them into discussion, let alone that the, that the church or the emperor reflected that they could be on the wrong way. And in this moment, he had to go into opposition and did it very quickly. Uh, I suppose already in the nine, uh, 1520, he wrote, uh, the Pope is Antichrist, and that is the most awful um, uh, offensive at that time. The Pope is uh, Antichrist, and so we have, have to oppose him. But once again, he didn't want to oppose him by totally new ideas, progressive ideas, revolution is the uh, means to put uh, uh, the world upside down. No, he wanted to bring uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Christendom back to the evangelical roots. And in this respect, I, uh, I took the uh, expression rebel, um, and in a time of upheaval, and this is more stronger in my book, uh, uh, which you uh, friendly enough mentioned in the beginning, which came out this year, uh, 1517. Um, and 1517 in Lutheran, German, um, self-understanding, the modern time came into being and it came into being by the hammer blows of Luther. I have fine quotations of prominent um, uh, um, uh, German theologians in the beginning of the last century, uh, and even in the 20s of last century, they said modern times started with Luther with the hammer blows. This was the understanding of German Protestantism. And, uh, <laughs> of course, uh, I was brought up in Cologne, uh, as a Protestant in Cologne, in Catholic Cologne. You might imagine Protestant in Rome is uh, a little bit the same. So I always be became aware there is another type of interpreting Christianity um, here. And it's the same with gew Gewissen, uh, a consciousness, the, 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 the Protestant Gewissen. I always had the feeling Catholic have a gewissen too. And Catholics were part on the way from medieval to early modern times too. And in this respect, I was very interested to look uh, not only uh, to the uh, other confession, that is to, to, uh, to Catholic, Catholicism, but also to the reformed Calvinist uh, a tradition and the tradition of Anabaptists and Hussites and Waldenser and whatever you can imagine, the whole, the whole spectrum of uh, um, the uh, Christian world in 16th century. And doing that, you very soon realize, no, uh, they too have uh, elements of reform, of modernizing, uh, uh, the world of Bible study and of, uh, of um, a scholarly work uh, in the Bible. Uh, in 15, in April, a famous Bible uh, edition came into being in Spain. Of course, the Protestant understanding is 
Spain is awfully rotten. There cannot be any positive modern uh, development, as was Rome, but Spain was e is even in the self-understanding of Protestantism even more rotten than Rome. But looking at 1517, you can find that the most modern project of working uh, on the Bible didn't start in Wittenberg. Of course, um, uh, Erasmus and uh, and uh, um, Basel, Baal uh, are important. The Protestant could, uh, Protestants could accept that. Baal is not so far. But in April 1570, the uh, Complutensische Polyglot, a Bible uh, edition on the highest level of humanistic and philological um, uh, uh, scholarship. Uh, was finished in Alcala uh, uh, in uh, uh, Spain. So one gets a feeling it is wrong to argue with Luther started everything. And then going all through the world, uh, you can realize that a lot of things started at that time, curiously enough, uh, uh, really a lot in the year 1570, but I don't want to make a mood of the year to, to, uh, to deconstruct the Luther mood and construct a mood of the year 1517. That's not my, my intention. But to realize that um, on different points in the world and on different subjects, the, the, the change from uh, the medieval way of life into a way of life uh, in direction to, um, to, to the early modern times and to modern times uh, started. So it's a deconstruction of the idea that everything started with Luther. And I had a telephone call and he wanted to, uh, to have a, a lecture from me on Luther, a Lutheran a person, and I told him the same as I did here, and then he said, okay, you might have right, but the most important thing started with Luther. So, so you can realize that it, it is part of uh, Protestant and of especially of German self-understanding that all the way of modern and uh, development of Neuzeit, of modern times, uh, started uh, uh, at the 31st October um, uh, 1570 at uh, Wittenberg. No, in my impression, that is, that is a myth and ideology, but not historical reality. So, what was the, the, uh, <laughs> Thank the next you. question? <laughs> oh, the did, didn't I, uh, did, did I uh, answer? Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the further question. Can we say that Luther was uh, a political reformer as well as a religious reformer? Which idea of Christian policy did he promote? And uh, how was this idea accomplished in the different lands and cities of the empire? I don't think that he wanted to be a political reformer, but in the end he became, necessarily he became one, a political reformer with direct consequences for social and political life. It was, of course, his counterpart, uh, uh, Thomas Münzer. Um, now, here too, you have to realize it's not political ideology uh, which drove uh, his, um, his movement, uh, it too was uh, rooted uh, in, uh, uh, in Bible studies, in theology, but he wanted to have a more direct uh, reaction uh, or, 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 or pressure on the world to change, uh, to change uh, the uh, fundamental, um, uh, the basic uh, uh, structures of, um, of uh, uh, political and uh, social uh, life. And as everybody knows, he uh, failed 
in a really uh, um, gorgeous uh, situation. Uh, the peasant war is important uh, in this respect. Luther himself didn't want to change directly um, uh, the political and uh, social life. But uh, as a church and a state, religion and politics and cultures were so strongly interlinked at that time. Uh, of course, in changing the, um, the uh, basis of um, ecclesiastical structures and institutions, that meant immediately consequences for the social life and for the uh, uh, political uh, life. And in this sense, he became, uh, of course, also a reformer of um, the ways how uh, people uh, live together, but not in a sense of a totally new revolutionary uh, basis, but uh, in the way of strengthening the, the institutions uh, being within, in Germany, concrete uh, uh, on the level of the, uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, 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 princes of the territories uh, and of course he would have been happy uh, and he was always um, in favor of a strong uh, emperor. He would have been uh, happy if the emperor uh, uh, would have accepted his ideas and uh, have a co coercion on Rome for reforms but that, as everybody knows, didn't happen because the emperor was um, a, a Habsburg uh, a prince with, um, with um, political uh, duties all around the world. He couldn't find to Luther quite um, uh, logically, so he had to rely on the princes. And uh, it came, now the princes, that is important, the princes at that time were already strong in Germany. We had already this, this kind of territories which were very strong in a political sense and which had uh, the same uh, military um, and, um, and political and cultural uh, power as had the, uh, the emperor nor even different, the emperor became more, uh, more or less unimportant, but the uh, territories and the princes were important already during the late uh, Middle Ages. And in this coalition between Luther and the territorial princes, of course, the, uh, the constitution of the empire uh, was shaped in a specific direction a strengthening of the territories, a strengthening of the princes. You can argue uh, German fu uh, um, federalism. German federalism was strengthened by Luther, whereas the center, the emperor, was weakened. But that is not only, uh, not only Luther's, uh, uh, is not only Luther responsible, but also the interest of the um, the Habsburg emperor in Spain, in, uh, middle, uh, in, in uh, America, uh, and so on. So this is one point, and the other point is the strengthening of the, um, of the authority of the princes. I don't know whether you want to go to that point in another question, but uh, it, I think it is linked to your question. Uh, in the moment in Germany, Luther, of course, everybody has to, uh, to, uh, to make a public statement uh, why Luther is important, why the German um, um, politics or politicians uh, spend an awful lot of money, I suppose 60 million money uh, for this uh, anniversary. And they are asked, what is important? Why is Luther important? Why are you spending so lot of money? And so the one says, uh, our, said, our 
uh, um, Finanzminister Schäuble, he said, okay, Luther find a lot of things which are important, but then he said, but Luther is the founder of the Obrigkeitsstaat. Obrigkeitsstaat is a delicate point in uh, Germany, the authoritarian state. Das Mikrofon, wo ist das? Das hier. Okay, so besser? Okay. Ich dachte ja immer, ich hätte so eine laute Stimme, dass ich auch bis zum letzten... Oh, oh excuse me. <laughs> I thought I, 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 I am very forceful uh, uh, voice. But uh, thank you very much. Uh, but now I have to think. Yes, uh, the uh, argue uh, Luther... Uh, uh, with Luther started the Obrigkeitsstaat, the authoritarian way. And the tendency of Germans to be authoritarian and not any longer for liberty. You see, Luther and liberty, of course, uh, uh, another statement uh, argue with Luther they started liberty, with Luther started enlightenment, with Luther started tolerance, and so on and so forth. So the one argument is with Luther started uh, the authoritarian state. And 14, uh, a fortnight later, you can read a statement by our uh, new president, Steinmeier, with Luther started democracy. So what is uh, now, what, what, what uh, I, I think both are wrong. And um, my Cetrum Censio is, and the book, the biography was written on this approach, on this framework, that Luther started in a quiet and worked and argued and thought, and his feeling too is from a different world, a quite different world to, uh, to nowadays uh, a situation. So uh, that will be, I suppose, another question. Um, freedom in his idea is quite different to freedom of our secular society today. And you have to explain it to the people. And the same is true with Obrigkeit. I think the English translation is authority, but Obrigkeit is still a, a more complex uh, argumentation and it's specific uh, German notion of the early modern times. Obrigkeit in the 19th century by the Prussians was quite different to Obrigkeit in the 16th century. So I, uh, I, I argued against um, uh, Schäuble, the beginning of the Obrigkeitsstaat and the authoritarian mind in Germany started in the 19th century with the Prussians, with the, Harp, uh, with the Hohenzollern, who were not Lutheran but were reformed. But that is quite another discussion uh, we uh, sh shouldn't make open uh, today. In 16th century, Obrigkeit just meant in German context the new uh, early modern state who was able to suppress the the uh, um, what's the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the 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 force uh, and uh, energy uh, uh, in uh, the, of the knights as for instance in Germany uh, and uh, bring them under a peaceful government by a strong Obrigkeit. It means the same as a generation later by Baudin, Souveraineté. The Souveraineté was established and Luther helped it. And I said to, not to, uh, to Schäuble, but uh, in answer to his idea, and he helps you to take in taxes. Uh, so he, he, he was one of, not the founder, but he strengthened this kind of modern sovereign uh, uh, state. And he, um, with regard to the princes, uh, he asked them to do a lot for education and for welfare. And so you could argue Luther is founder of the welfare state 
and of the state of education. So you have to be really careful to understand this man and his world. Of course, the world, as Bouddha, as I told you, they were thinking in the same categories. Um, and uh, uh, of course, uh, it was important um, that he, but he had to take an alliance with the princes and not with the emperor, not with the German king, let alone with the pope. In this direction, uh, in this development, he had uh, political, uh, his ideas and his movement had strong uh, political uh, consequences, but not in a direct connection to our uh, problems and our ideas uh, today. In this respect, you have to um, look very closely on the reception of Luther. In his reception of Luther during 500 years. And the modern time, in a certain respect, is more strongly uh, shaped by the reception of Luther than um, uh, by Luther's uh, proper ideas. Uh, thank you. And now the further question. Which kind of uh, relationships uh, did uh, Luther have with the emperor, Charles V, on one hand, and with the pope, Clemens uh, VII, uh, with regards to the unification attempts uh, on the other hand, above all during the imperial diet at Augsburg, in 1530. Yes. And I'm sorry, my question also because it's interesting to recall here, just because we are in Bologna, that some month before the Imperial Diet at Augsburg, uh, in February 1530, Charles V the, the, uh, was, uh, had been crowned by the Pope in Bologna, in San Petronius Basilica, that to say, just here in front of us. So it's a, a very important uh, uh, relationship in this sense. Yes, I yeah. know, and uh, <laughs> I, I hope uh, I can, can find some answers because I'm in the moment interested in, uh, uh, in Charles V's uh, yeah. uh, life. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I visited uh, San Petronio and was a little bit confused. Where exactly was he crowned? Could you tell me that? You see, there is a, 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 a very high uh, uh, altar, but that is only from 1560, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So have, ha, has one an idea how it, where is the place in this big church where he was uh, crowned, mm. and where, or wasn't he crowned in the church? Yeah, it, it, there was a, a, in uh, the wall Piazza Maggiore, yeah. there, w there was a huge uh, representation yeah. of all uh, politicians, so to say, uh, and all the religious men all over the world, so to say, and uh, there are many uh, some representation also here in Bologna in some uh, uh, very old uh, palace uh, and also a series of, uh, um, of incisions. Uh, yes. made At the coronation the, itself? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 it no? was the Pope, of the course. The Pope, yes, of yeah, course, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 In yeah. the church? No, the outside. Church. Outside, okay. In front. Okay, of, so you see. So as we can see, and read in many chronicles, of course, and also seeing these uh, uh, very beautiful uh, uh, build, uh, build representations. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. you see, it's, it's really a momentum in uh, world history. Uh, for the first time uh, since uh, the beginning of the problem of Luther, uh, Charles as emperor had a very delicate position. Uh, between uh, the Pope uh, and the Germans, in a certain respect, the German uh, princes. Uh, the princes uh, who 
became Protestant were very important for the emperor because the emperor, as you will know, didn't have time enough uh, to concentrate off German um, uh, situations. He had to go, he had uh, upheaval in, in Spain, he had problems with the Turks, he had problems with France. So it was uh, important that he could rely to a certain respect on uh, German uh, on the German princes, and at first place to Luther's prince, to um, um, Frederick of uh, the Weiss. And so he couldn't follow the ideas, Aleander, who wanted to have, a, it's a little bit like Brexit, a strong, a hard, or a weak Brexit. Uh, here it was a question a weak or a strong con condemnation of the heretic. And in the end, he had to accept a weak um, uh, 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 condemnation of the uh, heretic. And the, uh, uh, the Pope and uh, his uh, envoyer, they were disappointed. Uh, but uh, Frederick uh, was happy and he could save uh, Luther because the um, Reichsacht wasn't published in Saxonian, in the territory where the heretics lived. The condemnation wasn't, didn't exist because it wasn't published, so it didn't exist for these territories. Of course, uh, uh, Rome and the papacy, uh, they were angry about that, and there was a lot of discussion between uh, the papal uh, side and the imperial side, and uh, uh, there were uh, a lot of tension. And in 1530, but uh, uh, Charles, of course, wanted to have, he was already elected uh, uh, emperor, but he wanted to be the crowned emperor. And so there were a lot of uh, negotiations, and that finished was well done in uh, 1530 and uh, the coronation, and then uh, the um, emperor went once again, the first time after nine years, 1521 at Worms, the famous Reichstag uh, of Worms, uh, then he left uh, the, emp uh, the empire, Germany, and came only back in 1530. And of course, he now uh, being backed by the Pope and by the coronation, he had the idea, he has the authority to um, now to handle with, uh, the, uh, with the rebel or with the heretics and bring them back uh, to, um, uh, to the uh, church. And um, he uh, gave, published a manifest there's only, uh, is also a change within his, um, his uh, uh, close uh, 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 counselors. Uh, so there is a momentum that Charles might open his, uh, um, his uh, politics uh, uh, towards the uh, Protestants. And uh, Luther himself could not go to uh, to Augsburg because he was only safe uh, in uh, the Saxonian territories, which included also nowadays Thuringia. And the, the, um, the uh, uh, Saxonian uh, point, uh, most, uh, f the furthest to the, farthest to the south was Coburg with a big fortress and Luther went together with his, amp, uh, with his prince on his, that way, his way to uh, Augsburg uh, up to Coburg. And he had to stay in Coburg and in, um, uh, in uh, Augsburg, uh, Melanchthon uh, was the speaker for the for the uh, Protestants, and he formulated a confession, the later so-called Augsburg Confession, with the idea, also from his side, from the Protestant side, the idea that now there is a possibility um, 
to find a, yes a conviviality at least a conviviality uh, between uh, uh, both uh, uh, interpretations of the uh, of the uh, uh, of uh, Christian Christendom of the Bible, uh, but um, the, it's quite clear that um, Charles also at that moment uh, wasn't ready uh, to accept um, uh, uh, several, uh, as for instance, uh, the uh, very important the um, um, the priesthood of all Christians that was totally incompatible with the priest church. And it is quite clear that this, there, there couldn't be uh, uh, any um, uh, uh, compromise. Um, so in the end, as a historian has to, to, to state that uh, 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 an acceptance the one, uh, one side to another was not possible. And um, Melanchthon formulated the, the confession at this, uh, immediately. It was discussed by, by, uh, by uh, the papal theologians and they formulated the so-called refutatio. So it was quite clear uh, the, there was uh, no solution of the problems. Luther himself he was, you asked um, uh, after, uh, you asked how was his relationship or his uh, image of the emperor. He had a very high uh, feeling to the emperor. After, uh, after their meeting in uh, 1521 uh, in, uh, uh, in Worms, he wrote a long letter very personal letter to the emperor uh, to look uh, whether the emperor could, he could not find an understanding by the emperor. The emperor didn't, uh, didn't answer. He had uh, different problems, but also his idea of uh, a church and Christendom were totally different to that of Luther. But even in 1530, he had, he had high respect uh, of uh, Charles uh, V, uh, and uh, that made it so uh, complicated for him to accept resistance against the, uh, the uh, emperor. After the, 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 um, the uh, deed of Augsburg 1530 uh, became a catastrophe to the uh, Protestants, and the Protestants were forced to, uh, to find a political uh, institution to, uh, to, um, to protect them against. They were waiting for an attack of the emperor and of the Catholic princes. To prevent this attack, they formed uh, the Smalkaldic League and uh, they wanted to have uh, resistance against uh, the emperor. Luther couldn't accept it because at that time he uh, was of the opinion that the, uh, the, uh, the government of God didn't go through the princes but through the emperor. And so it was very, imp uh, very complicated for him and it, it, uh, it was a lot of discussion with the jurists who had argued, no, Luther, not only the emperor is blessed by God and had uh, 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 the government by God, but also the princes. Uh, so in the end, 1530 um, didn't uh, bring and couldn't bring a solution, uh, in, and it even brought uh, both parts further apart, and the the, the Protestant side had to organize uh, or to find an institution, an instrument of resistance, and that was the Schmalkaldic uh, League. And in this respect, Luther had to, yes, to reform in a certain uh, respect his idea of the power of the emperor and the power of the princes. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, further question. Uh, a very 
difficult uh, issue, we know. Was uh, Luther a pursuer of the Jews? Mm. How can we deal with this issue now in 2017? Yes, you are uh, quite right. Uh, actually, it is not so, uh, so a complicated question, but it is, of course, a question with regard to uh, political correctness. Um, not so much political correctness, but a situation, of course, after Holocaust, uh, this is uh, very delicate. Let me put it that way, a very a, a delicate uh, question. And here, in my opinion, uh, it is the duty of a historian to explain the, the, the thinking, the teaching, and the behavior of Luther towards the Jews. For once again, um, 16th, early 16th century is quite different to 19th century, where the question of the position of the Jews became a quite radical, different um, uh, 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 point of view uh, in Europe in general. And of course, it's all also different uh, to the uh, 20th century and especially to the Nazi regime. It is more confusing that uh, one has to confess uh, the Protestants have to confess that some Lutheran bishops uh, took the side of uh, uh, the regime, the side of uh, the Nazi uh, interpretation. That is, to jump out of Lutheran interpretation with regard to theological, religious, uh, uh, questions and differences between Jews uh, and uh, Christians into the racial one, into the racial interpretation. Trying to make understandable Luther's awful uh, uh, attacks uh, against uh, the Jews, mm -hmm. you have first to argue, no, it was a quite different uh, uh, situation and Luther's thinking was quite different to um, uh, to the Nazi and the uh, res racist interpretation. Of course, that is very not very uh, yet once again delicate because uh, if you try to differentiate uh, the question, some people argue, "Oh, he is uh, anti-Semit uh, uh, person." Um, but uh, well, I, happily enough, when I uh, had a similar dis uh, discussion with colleagues uh, in, uh, in uh, Jerusalem, they told me, oh, get rid of this idea. You have and you should uh, bring it into the original surrounding of the early 16th century. Luther first, um, and another thing I, I just wanted to uh, argue, the Lutheran church or the Protestant church in Germany in general, Sometimes they are attacked today. They didn't take uh, um, a, a position against the awful uh, mistakes uh, uh, and the, uh, yes, uh, the criminal uh, attitude of Lutheran uh, bishops uh, during the Nazi time. That is not wrong, and that's, that's wrong. Already in the early 15th, the Protestant Church accepted uh, uh, this. Schultz, what is Schultz? Uh, uh, responsibility. Yes, yeah. They accepted their responsibility uh, and they uh, even interpreted uh, Luther's uh, uh, anti Jewish um, um, uh, writing and preaching. So, in the end, it is not that uh, extraordinary, uh, this discussion. It is just, uh, of course, in, with regard to the 500th um, uh, year, they, it's once in, uh, in the public. 
to understand Luther, you have first to know that in the beginning, in the 20s, he wrote a very a treatise very favorable uh, to the Jews, that uh, uh, the Jews are brethren of our Lord Christ. But once again, you have interpreted in Luther's uh, ideas, not in the sense that he could accept an equal uh, position of the Jewish truth and the Christian truth. They are brethren of Jesus Christ. And if we, or I, with my Luther, with my uh, new theology, can tell them how the things are, they will accept it. The Christian truth. They are only, uh, they didn't uh, convert to Christianity only why the, why the, because of the popes who didn't put the Christian truth uh, right and correctly. But now as the evangelical truth uh, is coming to light, is, has come to light, they will uh, convert to Christianity. Of course, they didn't. A lot of um, uh, um, rabbis, or, or not, not a lot, several rabbis, went to Wittenberg to discuss with Luther. They too had the feeling there is something new in Christianity. And so we have a chance to be accepted in a specific way within this Christianity. But that was a deep mistake, of course, because Luther wasn't able to accept a different truth to his own truth. He couldn't accept the papal truth, he couldn't accept the uh, uh, Islamic truth of the Turks, and of course he couldn't accept a specific truth of uh, uh, the Jewish uh, religion. And he became even... The, the rabbis came to him and wanted to discuss the Old Testament with Luther. And Luther became angry because his arguments, he thought my arguments are the only true arguments. And he had to realize the, the Jews will not accept it. They wanted to discuss with him. And so he said, uh, go away. Uh, and he spoke of the Jews are verstockt. Now, here I don't have the English translation. If anybody has got it, they are stupid. They don't, verstockt means, what? Stubborn. Stubborn. Yeah, yeah, stubborn. Uh, yes, stubborn. <laughs> it's not exactly, but stubborn is, is a good idea. Uh, it's Everything Some, is... Somebody... That's it? Oh, yeah. I, we can't hear. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, yes, but I, I can explain you. it. I can explain it. The truth is so simple and so evident. And everybody with uh, a, a good feeling has to accept it. But they don't want it. They are stubborn. Uh, yes, like sheep, stubborn is especially sheep. Yes, sheep who uh, want to, to should go into the stable, but they are so stubborn that they don't want. They went in the opposite direction, and from this moment on, uh, there uh, was a deep confusion between Luther uh, and uh, the Jews. But of course, mainly by Luther, he. Uh, understood, yes, as he did, he, he always interpreted his, uh, the, the political situation and the development of his time in perspective of an, uh, uh, of an e eternal conflict between good and uh, bad, between white and black, between God and, and uh, the uh, agents of devil. From this moment on, he interpreted the Jews 
as agent of the devil, as he did with, uh, the, uh, with the Catholics, as he did with, uh, the, uh, with the Turks. And um, the, 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 the really nasty and uh, for us f totally ununderstandable um, attacks on Jews uh, are in the um, uh, late uh, 40s and uh, during his really very last weeks. He died in Eisleben uh, in February uh, 46, and the day before, two days before he died, he gave, he preached, actually he preached nearly every day, and he preached, and he was already weak in the end of his preach, and he said, I have to finish because I feel weak. But in the last few sentences, he gave a kind of testament for the princes. They should kick out the Jews. That is really, really uh, embarrassing how in his very, le uh, two days late later he died. And my interpretation is that in, it's uh, the situation when the Smalkaldic uh, war was about to start. He knew the emperor is looking for military force. The, uh, the South German uh, Catholic um, princes uh, have already looked for armies and they will come to the Protestant territories. And he himself felt that he is dying. And so he had to feel what will happen in the moment I died and the forces of the devil will come to the uh, Protestant territories. And here, once again, he wanted not only the, uh, the, um, the devil, but also the idea of purity. He wanted to have um, uh, religious purity in the countries uh, where his reformation survived and had to survive without him, to, had to survive without him and the emperor moving on with military forces. This was the situation, and when he went to Eisenach, uh, uh, Eisleben, where he died, he had to cross um, Halle, already a Protestant uh, uh, town, but as it was all over Ger uh, Germany that the, that part of Catholic institutions survived um, in uh, um, Protestant uh, cities. And here in, uh, in um, Halle it was the same. And he preached in the same way. You have to kick out the, 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 the papal uh, uh, agents because they are agents of the devil. And when I die, they will once again bring the wrong, uh, uh, the wrong uh, uh, teaching into the, uh, the city must be pure of these agents. And the same was his idea with regard to the Jewish uh, people. And uh, the Saxony, uh, Saxony was, uh, they, they did already uh, kick out the the Jews uh, in the last uh, 15, uh, last years of the 15th century. So Luther didn't become acquainted with, with real Jews, but in uh, the territory of Mansfeld, you see that's awful uh, uh, German uh, uh, territorial history, Mansfeld, where Luther was born, there were several um, dukes uh, and uh, some of them accepted still uh, Jewish communities. And by traveling to uh, Eisleben, he had to cross uh, one of these small cities, a uh, small town, uh, villages where a Jewish community existed. And then he caught a cold. Uh, he had uh, his wagon was open and he caught a cold and he wrote to his wife going through this uh, uh, village with the Jews there 
came a cold wind, and that was uh, apparently of the devil. You would say these were the Jews. You, his wife. So uh, he went then to his uh, uh, to 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 uh, uh, to Eisleben and had the feeling I have to to to, to became to, to to become sure that after I have died there are not any longer agents within our pure Protestant communities which can uh, once again uh, uh, bring confusion into. And this is Luther's uh, um, uh, position, and he tells, uh, the, that is quite clear, he tells the princes, you have to kick them out. You have to destroy the synagogues. You have to burn all the, their books, and so on and so, uh, and so forth. There's no question that it is radical anti-Jewistic, but not in the sense of uh, Holocaust. I think that's uh, really uh, important to understand that. And the consequences that Lutheran, um, uh, Lutheran pastors uh, 500 years later, or nearly 500 years later, interpreted Luther in the wrong way is uh, true too. But on the other hand, and I will finish with this point, on the other hand, you see, I'm, I'm an historian who is from the beginning doing comparative history. And so we have to ask, we, don't have, we have not only the German Jewish, uh, the German Lutheran situation, you have strong Lutheran, uh, uh, or, or one society which is strongly shaped by Lutheran ideas is Denmark. And in Denmark, you don't have this, uh, this uh, uh, anti-Semitism uh, uh, during uh, the uh, 20th century. In contrary, when, uh, uh, when uh, the German Nazis asked uh, uh, the, Jewish, uh, the Jews in Denmark to wear the, uh, the famous yellow uh, uh, sign, a lot of uh, Danish Lutheran people took the uh, sign too. So I think it's more the specific German political and cultural development than uh, the Lutheran origin uh, of uh, uh, these uh, ideas.